We'll continue our MVC Flutter Framework series. In this video, we'll demonstrate how you're able to switch back and forth from the Material Design interface to the Cupertino Design interface. To the interface encouraged by Google for the Android platform, as well as the interface more recognizable as the the look and feel of an iPhone, an iOS platform. So how's that done? Well, that's done using the key. In Flutter, it's no, again, there's no reinventing of the wheel here. We take advantage of the Flutter framework itself. If you want to recreate a state object without it having the render tree assigning it dirty, if you explicitly want to change it, you must assign a different key to the stateful widget. The stateful widget counterpart is being destroyed and created all the time through a typical life cycle of an app. It's the state object that retains its data. In other words, you're allowed in the state object to have mutable data, and yet the state object itself stays in memory. Let's demonstrate now. Let's examine how this is done. Go into the home screen. We're going to go to the counter app, Stateful Widget. Here it is. Here now is the mechanism used to switch back and forth. Now, the Flutter team does not encourage such a logical statement in creating a the state object. But this approach ensures that something is created. In this case, if the app is to use the material interface, it uses the Android version. Else, it uses the iOS version. Right now, we are in the iOS version, as you can see. In normal circumstances, typical Flutter apps, this create statement is fired once and only once, at the very beginning when this stateful widget is first instantiated. It creates its, its state object soon after, and that's it. The statement is never triggered again. However, in this circumstance, it is triggered time and time again every time you press this button. So let's just continue this, and now we're in the material. The key to this functionality is the key. The value passed to the stateful widget is unique every time you press that button. Doing so in the Flutter framework causes this function to be called again. Now let's step back a bit and provide that key. At the app level, you may know, in the MVC Flutter framework, we define the whole look and feel of the application. So let's go here. Here is the app stateful widget. This is the very class that's passed to the run app method, as you may know. This is part of the MVC Flutter framework. Its corresponding state object is conceived by the MVC Flutter framework's create view method. Again, this gives you a hint of its its link, to how it's incorporated with the MVC design pattern. We have a create view to create the view aspect of this application. We have data separated by view, separated by the interface, separated by the event handling. In other words, data is model, the view is the interface, and the controller is the event handling. Let's go here now and see what we have here. So this method returns a type app state. This class definition obviously extends app state. Here is where we describe the look and feel of your app. You may have noticed in my demos, the debug banner is not visible when we're running because I've chose to turn it off. All the, there's a slew of name parameters available here 
You'll recognize them as standard name parameters assigned to the Material app or to the Cupertino app. There's some additional name parameters specific to this framework. In, in particular, there is this value. This allows you, this allows you to retain the, the, either the material design or the Cupertino design the next time you start up this demo app. So right now, if we shut this down and open it up again, we'll return to material. However, if I switched it out to Cupertino, next time I start up this app, we're back to the Cupertino. That's what this mechanism is. The MVC Flutter framework utilizes the system preferences. Let's try that. Let me, let's, let's try something here. I'm going to hit that button. Let's go to the interface. We're in Cupertino at the moment. So we're in iOS. Let's go to that interface. We know we utilized controllers to handle the events. So this controller I know is the one that handles that button. So here's our reference instant variable that references that. Where is the leading? Ah, oh, here we go. So here is the iOS screen. Here is the leading value. We don't know what it is. In other words, we don't know what really happens when we press this button. All we know is that as the developer of the interface, we are to assign the corresponding leading field found in the controller. Here's the leading field. Let's go in there. Behind the scenes. It's calling a static method from the MVC Flutter framework. Note it's providing the appropriate string, which is to change the interface. It's a string allowing you then to introduce yet not only Cupertino and material, but any other design patterns that you can develop down the road. The Flutter team has allowed that, by the way. That's a whole new series of videos in itself. It is this routine, however, that this part here is the one that's recording the last interface into the system preferences. It's this this stretch of code here that allows you, you to return to that interface the next time you start up the app. So we set a Boolean value to switch the UI depending on the platform you're running. And then when it starts up back here, it gets that value from the system preferences. Right. But here's the magic to the changing the interface from material to the Cupertino and it's providing this key, the home key. So let's go back now to that mechanism. Here is a static method from the MVC Flutter framework. In there, we won't get into details, but we'll simply go into the, that routine and discover that home key again. It's being signed a new, new value, a new unique key. And when that's done, then back here, as you can see, we have an anonymous function. You're familiar, of course, with the name parameter home. Home, this could have just as easily been that, of course. Then we have lost that functionality, allowing us to switch back and forth. We need to be able to call this again. In some instances, you can get away with this for a time. The rendering tree will, will have that stateful widget be dirty, as it were. In other words, it needs to be rebuilt for one reason or another. In some cases, that won't happen. Providing an anonymous function, however, and guarantees that the stateful widget will be recreated again, this time with a new key. This in-home name parameter is, again, unique to this MVC 
Flutter framework. Oh, I got it right. There we go. And that's it. I spelt it wrong. So now let's put a breakpoint there. Let's put a breakpoint there. We already have a breakpoint there. In normal circumstances, those breakpoints would never happen. You would simply pass your home screen to the home name parameter. So that stateful widget would be called and created once. Consequently, by design in the Flutter framework, that state object is traditionally just created once. I'm going to hit that button. When I hit that button, the, in fact, I should have stepped back a little further, but uh, the simple fact is that that staple widget is going to be recreated. And this is now a new key. Hence, this method will be called again. And what does this, this static field say? It now says true, so this is going to be called. So we're in material. I'm going to take those breakpoints. Well, I'll leave it in for now, and let's go back to the leading. Here we are. Let's go into that routine. Again, we don't know the mechanism at, at the interface stage. We don't need to, but the developers involved in vent handling, in other words, involved in developing the controllers, they know full well to call this routine. What does this routine do? Its magic is in. Okay, so in here, it changes the key. In here, it refreshes the screen. In other words, the data. It goes, depending on the value, either reinitiates a material app widget or reinitiate a Cupertino app widget. And we'll get into that in subsequent videos. But all that would be for naught if you didn't change the key. So we'll hit this button. This key value right here is going to be changed. Overwritten with a new one. This state objects home is going to be called again. Uh, maybe we can take a quick peek. Here we go through the heritage object. Uh, we go through the build. Here we go. So we are to use the Cupertino this time. Right now we're in material. It's switching now to Cupertino. So now we're calling it the Cupertino app. There is no name parameter pass. It's null. So we're utilizing this method here. This method, if it's not defined itself, again, developers love options. So you can actually simply just override this method and put in your own routine altogether. If not, it tests for this name parameter, which happens to be a function that returns a widget. If it's not now, which it isn't, it's calling it. And there we are with the new key. Hence, the create state will be called. And that's it. Back and forth, back and forth.